we in our daily lives uh, we do a lot of activities no we are constantly and uh, changing one activity uh, with, uh, after the other and in those activities uh, we use energy in all of those activities we need a certain amount of energy to be involved in that in but why why do we need those activities why do we what do you think? Why we are involved in this constant activity um, uh, development? Actually, what we do is to uh, produce utility. What the, aim, the final aim of our activities can be defined as producing utility to fulfill our needs. And so, one of the activities that we do constantly is the, the architecture, no? the building activity. And the utility of this activity is to produce habitability. Our, so we, need, we have some needs, we have some uh, uh, satisfactions that we need to produce, and we do activities to produce those satisfactions, those utilities. And we as architects can be around those activities. We can make di diagrams on how these are retained. We can calculate what is the space use that, that we need for those. And we can cal calculate what are the resources that we need for those activities. Because any activity will need energy, but also will need other resources that are available in nature to be transformed in something that is usable for us to produce this activity. The good thing is that all the, all the resources that we use uh, for our activities are actually, for instance, water consumption, waste, uh, the waste production, uh, the food that we ingest, uh, uh, all of those can be transferred into the energy consumption. Actually, energy is what we use to produce utility. So all our activities will be um, finally um, mm -hmm constrained by, by our access to energy, the amount of energy that we have uh, available. The idea of energy culture, so how this relationship between what we do and the, the activities and, and the, the things that we do to the energy use that uh, we need for fulfilling those activities <laughs> can be uh, uh, defined as our energy culture. This idea of energy culture is a analysis framework that was developed in 2009. So it's a very quite new concept that was developed in a research group in New Zealand. And it's useful to uh, analyze what are the triggers, or what are the factors that define our relationship with energy, but also what are the triggers that we as a, a designers or architects, we can use to produce or to boost changes in this energy culture. Activities as silly as having a, a dinner with friends. No? Imagine that you have been invited to a dinner with your friends. Um, and well, this, uh, when you are, are going to attend to this dinner, you will have some expectations. In this uh, energy culture framework, this will be called norms. What are norms? Norms are the things that we expect that uh, that are going to happen in a certain context or in a certain situation. For instance, when we arrive in our colleague's uh, apartment or dwelling, we expect to be able to take out food because we expect that there are some energy means that are used to produce a certain uh, comfort conditions that allows us to, to be inside in a certain temperature that, is, that we don't need to. We also, uh, will expect that uh, in the, if there will be a table around which we are going to gather together, there are going to, there are going to be some dishes, some uh, plates, some pottery, etc. All these, uh, all these elements will need uh, are the, the result of an energy use, a transformation of natural resources to, to, to be there. We also may, expect that there's uh, some lighting in the environment, that we expect that we can have some fresh beer. Uh, we can expect that we are going to be able to wash our hands, etc., etc. All those expectations or the norms that in which we consider uh, is uh, necessary uh, uh, a certain activity to happen. So, and this, uh, of course, shapes 
how uh, what is the energy that is needed to achieve those expectations and norms can be expectations well and the thing is that a slight difference in the activities so the practices that we do um, will produce changes in, the, in those expectations this means that for instance a difference in the assiduity in which we produce an activity uh, can change completely the expectations that we have. If we compare this image with the previous one, in the previous one, no, it calls us or it reminds us as a, a very sporadic situation in which or a special day like Thanksgiving or, or um, uh, um, uh, a birthday. But in this situation, the only thing that changes, so it's the same activity, gathering together to have dinner with friends. And the only thing that may change is the frequency in which these activities are. So in this case, probably uh, they gather together each week or twice a week to have dinner together. So it's a more informal uh, situation. And as you see, all the, the elements of the, the expectation and what is happening is not the same as before. Well, here we don't have dishes, uh, so people is sitting in the floor. <laughs> no one is has been preparing food, so there's no need for having the means to cook food because uh, the food can be delivered to the home. And this also this defines a different use of the food. No? In, at some point, one may may think that. Uh, in this case, we are uh, saving energy, we are saving uh, means, resources, as we no, no one has to devote time to prepare for the dinner. But those resources have been transported in time and, and, and space to another place. So uh, what is happening in that moment is related and is dependent on what has happened before in other parts of the city, in other parts of the territory. So um, we need to think about uh, the activities, which in the culture energy framework are called practices, uh, as, a, as something that are crystallizing uh, at, uh, other activities and other practices that have, have happened before and that will happen later. So we have... Up to now, we have talked about two factors, so the actual practices that will spend energy, although the main uh, aim won't never be to use energy, but others, uh, other finalities. Uh, we have talked about the norms, so the expectations that we have on how things should happen, or should, how should we behave in a certain context. And the third uh, group of factors that will and play a role in how in how is our relation with energy or how we use energy are the, the is the material culture. So the objects, buildings, uh, infrastructure, and also um, the technologies that we use to uh, produce this utility. This uh, uh, element, so there is the physical element or the physical expression of the norms and, and the practices of a certain energy culture, can be elements that will actually use energy to function, for instance, an oven, will be elements that will determine or determine or define how much energy do we use, for instance, a building, depending on the fish energy efficiency of a building, we will use more or less energy for a certain activity. And uh, it, it is possible that can be objects that inform us about how much energy are we consuming or are we using. Or finally, can be uh, materials or uh, uh, elements or technologies that generate energy by themselves. <laughs> All those four elements are uh, three elements that are not unrelated from one with the other. For instance, a change um, uh, and a, a change in the north can involve a change in the This is my home. It used to be my home. 
some years ago. I've been there with my partner for 10 years. Or so. uh, this is the cleaning room and the sitting room. It's a cozy uh, and it's uh, reflecting an energy culture of the beginning of the, the past century. So it's a building from the 90s. And it has been adapted a little bit to our new coal energy culture. So now it has a vacuum, for instance, and it didn't uh, used to have it. Uh, but as you see, most of the elements remain the same. So the, the, the windows are the same, the doors, the, the partitions, the structure are the same. So some changes, but not much. As you can imagine, this in this building, uh, in this uh, apartment, we had uh, when we entered, uh, when we first rented it and we entered it, uh, we had no kitchen, for instance, we had to build one. Um, we uh, didn't have any elevator, so we had to climb up three stages to raise our dwelling. There was a gas boiler that was a smaller filter, uh, but it was a small one, so we had to look at how much time we spent in the shower. Uh, so in order to don't run out of hot water. Uh, there wasn't a uh, uh, heating system, so we just plug in some electric uh, devices to get the, the space heated during the winter. We also did some other arrangements. We tried to heat only the part, so we uh, divided the space. So we just had to keep the space or the part of the building which we were living at that moment. Uh, so we, because we were able to, we didn't have enough money or enough energy to heat the whole thing uh, at the same time. We did have some elements that were important for us. Sorry, like. Uh, some elements in which we, we could uh, move and, and display in order to get sun or sunlight or to protect from sunlight in the summer. Um, the building has, had no insulation, so you can imagine that the energy efficiency of the building was uh, uh, very bad. And the tightness of those windows, you imagine that it's not the best one. So we we use some elements to increase the tightness of the windows, but um, well, uh, we did well. But we were happy. We were. It was our uh, expectation of what we need. We needed at that time uh, to, was to fight with these conditions because we were in the center of the city, so in the middle of Barcelona. We were close to everything we needed to uh, to perform our lives. It was a quiet building. It was no noise of cars or anything else. And um, it was very lively. Uh, it was uh, had a lot of natural light. What happened? I got pregnant. And when I got pregnant, slightly, no, when months uh, uh, passed, uh, our norms, our expectations changed. Uh, thinking about climbing three steps was not acceptable anymore, etc., etc., etc. So we decided to move to another apartment. So what we did actually is to change our material culture. The, no, and changing our apartment, so moving to another apartment was changing our material culture. And now we live, and this is my son. Um, so we live in an, another apartment out of Barcelona. We, need, we live in San Cugat, which is close to our jobs. Um, the building is um, more a uh, recent building. It's from the 70s. Uh, it has an acceptable insulation. The windows are uh, more uh, tight, so air is not filling in uh, the um, joints. We have uh, heating, a gas heating, so we can heat the whole apartment in the same time, and we don't need to choose what part of the apartment we should heat. We have a big kitchen. Um, and we have a gas boiler, which means that we can we don't have to have a timer when we have a shower. So we have we are living now in a more efficient building if you look at that this. Uh, but our energy consumption has increased. So um, you see that 
just a change in norms, in the expectations or the aspirations that one have will, will can trigger a change in both the material culture, the, 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 the uh, and the practices that we could so, okay. um, finally, so I need to talk about three elements that will uh, play a role in our energy cultures, and the fourth one uh, is the contextual, uh, the external factors. The external factors are factors that are contextual, but are out of our um, our possibility to change them or to in, uh, to make a, an incident of them. For instance, well, it is something that uh, is uh, now um, on or being talked about in, in Europe, a problem that we may face in some months. Uh, we have now the uh, problem on energy shortage, something that we felt as granted, which is the availability of energy 24 hours, seven days a week, is not, it seems that it is not going to be a uh, reality in the next, in the next. And this, of course, will trigger changes in our practices and in the norms and changes in the Pandemia is another example of, of a contextual uh, or uh, contextual factor that uh, actually causes uh, an, an impact on our energy culture. As you see here, we have the evolution from, from zero, would be the energy consumption uh, expected for the year 2020. And all those lines are showing the actual energy consumption for different countries, Italy, Germany, France, Spain, Great Britain, and India, um, during the pandemic. So we see that during the pandemic, and the dotted lines show the, 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 the confining uh, periods in each country. So as you see here, that in, in, the, first, in the beginning of the pandemic and during the, the the um, closing uh, and also closing in, the, in houses so when, when the transportation and the mobility was reduced, uh, the energy consumption was also uh, impacted. So most of our activities uh, were performed. So the, the only activity or the only practice that changed actually more of that we stop doing was the practice of moving from one place to another. But the rest of the practices change in terms that they had to adapt to uh, the space or, uh, in which they were born. But all changing this own practice uh, caused uh, an important impact in our energy consumption. Other supplies and uh, you know, other changes in the norms can also trigger changes in, the, in our practices. For instance, this is a, a, a space that used to be a street. And it's, uh, the norm says that uh, there was uh, reserved for the use of cars. And in the project of Superlias, which is practical uh, urbanist, they uh, define it, you know, the, the norm change, so the expectation of what was the activities or the kind of activities that were supposed to happen in this state change as a change in the policy. And this change was uh, physically um, defined in the urban state as with painting uh, some lines and some flying pots. And this triggered uh, changes in the practices of these uh, of the neighborhoods in the, in the in around this area. So probably the, those signs here, we don't know what they would be doing if this uh, if this change in the norms happened, 
but now we see that they are using or they are biking and probably they are biking more often than they used to do before having the space for doing that. So uh, a change in norms that change of that triggers a change in co uh, material culture and also a change in the practices of the people in the group. So I showed you before this image of the impact of the fear about the energy shortage in Europe for the next uh, winter. We, we take as granted that we are able to access to energy as in a constant, uh, constantly, so in a 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. But this wasn't, and it, for us it's horrible, no? And this is reflected in the news uh, that were published uh, or have been published some months ago when the Ukraine war started. It seems for us impossible that this uh, is going to stop to be like this, that it's possible that this can be changed. But actually, this is something that is a rarity, or it is very uh, special in the, in, in the human history. If we think about what happened just 100 years ago in a, what is called an uh, organic society, um, energy was, a bike was the lim limiting factor of our activities. So all that during the, the past years, uh, or the past, during the whole of the history of humanity, and uh, the activities were limited by the access or the availability of energy. This is not true anymore, and it seems impossible that, uh, that it can be like this. But um, and that was the case in organic society, in which um, the, ter the resources that the territory could provide were limiting the amount of um, energy that was available. If you want to use energy, for instance, to heat your home or to cook, you had to go to the woods, you had to cut a chunk of wood of timber and fire it, burn it to get energy. If you do, did that for if you did that, you use some space, some area that uh, for, for that activity, you couldn't use that for another activity like feeding. So there was there was a competing um, um, and very scarce uh, space and resource uh, um, availability um, in which the construction uh, wasn't the first uh, or one of the first activities chosen for um, for the use of resources. Despite that, we have those big buildings uh, still standing up in the world that were built so many, uh, so many years ago, in 2,500 before uh, Christ, there was constructed this big pyramid of Rome. And this kind of architecture is showing us the power of that uh, uh, of, no, of that society at that time. Power was the same as having uh, a spare energy that could be uh, in, invested in the construction of buildings, which was not a reproductive activity, but a symbolic activity in this case that was aimed at showing the power of that society. It, it's, it, uh, calculated that it was used about 5 million tons of materials. Which materials? Sandstone, granite, and limestone. So these three materials were used to build the pyramid. And the energy that was involved in this activity was about 70, or was the equivalent of 78 million working days of a lead level And it had a heat of 100 uh, or 481 feet.
in a van. So that was the view. That building was uh, the tallest one for 3,000 and a half years and until the construction of St. Paul's Cathedral in 1221 in London. From, from, and, it, and the height of the buildings remained almost the same. So it, they changed in some meters height and feet and height or height and height, but it remains almost the same until the end of the 19th century when something happened. Uh, till then, the, our energy culture has changed drastically uh, and we uh, uh, and also our the means and the kind of architecture that we are able to produce what happened at that time uh, well we suddenly we had access to an enormous amount of energy we were with the invention of the of the steam engine we could make use of a resource that, were, that we couldn't use before, which is the fossil fuel. And we learned how to take advantage, how to make utility from that resource and to produce energy from that. So we did this link, so our link with the biosphere, which was the main um, source of resources during the Spanish society. Um, was uh, this link, and we were able to go to reach to the lithosphere to find new materials, new resources in a enormous uh, investment of energy in order to produce um, new uh, structures and, uh, that will use the new architecture of that time and that is determining the architecture. Uh, that we are designing uh, now. So we had new materials like uh, steel, also cement, but so we were able to heat at, at high temperature the materials, the raw material in order to produce cement. That was first, but then also the aluminium or the plastics were put in place. And during the 20th century, the architects experimented with those materials in order to uh, define which were the, the, the users and the, uh, and the possibilities of, of those materials. So now the construction is one of the activities that uses more energy, uh, uh, the, one of those activities that we do that uses more energy. Mm -hmm. We are able to make a building that has uh, up to 2,700 feet. So if you compare that with the Chico pyramid that was before, look at the difference in shape. So this was true for uh, the whole, this was the, the capacity of the humanity in the, the built environment, the building, what, is, what we were capable to build up to the 19th century. And this is what we are capable to build today. But this is not uh, for free. This, is, this has a cost. And imagine the amount of energy that is needed to fulfill those uh, uh, miracles. We are in, um, in tour of miracles, but we are not aware of that. We can transport materials from one point of the, of the world to the other. Uh, we can excavate uh, foundations that are very, very deep in the air. We can lift very heavy weights we can produce steel, we can produce huge uh, glasses, uh, panels of glass, etc., etc., etc. And this is because we have access to a very, very cheap energy. Actually, the tendency has been that in, despite uh, for in each uh, material de development, we use more and more energy to produce the novelties and the development of materials. These materials have been uh, have been more and more cheaper, and this has allowed this tremendous and incredible uh, revolution uh, in the last years. Not only we 
are using more materials. So if we look at the, we are still compare what we did in an urban society and we, what we did in our technology society formerly. Uh, do you remember these two, three materials that were used for the pyramid of scale? Now we are using in average 174 materials, different materials in each building that we use. So imagine also the diversity uh, of functions and possibilities that this is giving us. And this was celebrated in architecture, uh, not just for in terms of the material use and the possibilities that it has to structurally and uh, the design functions and design uh, were allowed to do those materials, but also in the fact that we could detach uh, architecture from its uh, surroundings. So architecture became um, independent on what was happening before, I uh, in the period, and could function without taking into account what was the climate, what were the weather conditions that were uh, in the context. And this was celebrated by architects and was explicitly shown in the designs and in the development. The thing is that another consequence of this detachment or this abundance of energy is not just the activities that we can do, we can do but also um, the amount of people that we can live in the planet. So uh, the availability of energy has the consequence of an in incredible increase in the population. And it's estimated that this is going to, to continue in the following years, in the following years. So it, what is estimated that is that from now to 2050 or in 2050, the population will, will have increased in 9.6 millions of uh, billions of people. Uh, and if we try to translate this into housing demand, so in the demand of habitability, this will uh, suppose an increase in 130 billion of square meters for dwellings and 25 billion of square meters for service buildings. And this um, will, we will need, of course, to answer to this demand, so we need to meet this demand, but with the challenge that we are living now in the context of climate change. So if we think that the material emissions for, for, uh, of, a, of building, a, of building uh, are between 700 and 1,000 uh, 1, kilos of CO2 per square meter, this demand will suppose uh, the emission of 110 gigatons of CO2. If we think also that we cannot live in buildings as, as used to live uh, some years ago, but we need to refurbish the existing buildings, this will uh, add uh, to, the, to that, those emissions uh, a tot, uh, and, and will, 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 will uh, emit a total of 215 gigatons of CO2 from now to the moment in which we are going to be a despite society. So 200, what, what is 250 gigatons of CO2? Well, the EPP, EPP panel uh, tells us what this means. Uh, if you see here in the table, uh, what, is, uh, what is said here is, what are the uh, estimated remaining carbon emissions that we can produce from now to the decarbonization. So are the emissions that we can use or that we need to use to decarbonize our society or what is the same, to change our energy policy. If we think on a, on a um, climate change or a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees, and we want to be certain about this uh, energy temperature change, we will have 300 uh, gigatons of CO2 remaining, remaining uh, to, to make this transition. So just building the demand, the habitability that is demanded or estimated to, to, that we will need in the next years will extend two thirds of the remaining emissions. So you see what is the problem that we see. Probably the, the 
major challenge uh, in the history of the continent. If we are more not that uh, optimistic and we think about our goal of two degrees increase, anyway, we don't have that much budget to to uh, use to any. So what we need to, to, to think now is what we want to use those emissions for. We need to be strategic on that. So we know, you know the, the good thing about or the advantage about this theoretical framework of energy cultures is that we can classify, we can detect the triggers that can uh, help or that can make a change um, in our energy culture. And helps us to think systematically, taking into account that changing one of the factors will change automatically the other. The other. Um, one of the strategies that I've uh, proposed uh, to reduce um, the, or to reduce uh, yeah, the emissions in, in, the, in, the, in the construction sector is to work on the, um, on the decarbonization path of building materials. This is an example. This is a, a decarbonization path for the concrete, for the concrete uh, um, sector. And this is a um, uh, figure, a summary figure that was made uh, by a, uh, a report made by an independent organist. And it, it, what it's saying, what this uh, graphic sort of figure is saying is that we, with energy efficiency and the implementation of renewables, which is renewables, these are these two these small lines in here, we barely can change the, um, the emissions of the sector. We need to go into changing the clinical ratio, so the semen ratio and the mixture of water or of semen. Uh, uh, and also, we will need to use uh, carbon sequestration, which is a, a technology which is not developed yet. So we are pressing on technologies that are not yet ready in order to reach that decarbonization scenarios uh, of the existing material. So we need to be critical on that. We need to know what is the goal and try to find uh, and try to use the, those materials that uh, are very capable to and the in the process. We can use other kinds of materials, for instance, uh, by these materials, uh, in low transformation. And we, in this case, is a, a house that was built uh, 100 years ago out of, of the straw. So we will need to, if we, we will need to change our material culture, but this will also trigger changes in our, uh, in our practices. So for instance, we may need to take the way we, we design those buildings in order to protect the, the, those medical materials that are, well, that can be done with water, from water. And we can, we also will need to change our practice in terms that we need to maintain those materials. Uh, those buildings, we need to um, varnish wood uh, uh, each year, for instance, to maintain it. So that... And we are working in the school, we are working in this, uh, in this domain. This is a, a prototype that is made out for staffs. So uh, we use common staff in order to produce different materials. You see, different construction systems that have been, are going to be tested here. We are going to monitor like, the performance and how they indicate this time and how they uh, decay uh, or they advance the time. I wanted to show this here as uh, you have plenty of form in this area. So I thought that it could be interesting for you that you can, could come build. Um, Energy transition or energy culture, of course, uh, 
this change in energy culture will meet the change in the material culture and energy, not the development of, uh, of renewable and production of energy is one of the key factors that will be placed uh, that we need to be placed. But there are some scientists that are already uh, warning us about the limitations of these strategies in terms of the amount of rare materials that those technologies depend on. So probably the the develop we don't have and they repeat the calculations and we don't have as a society, which is not uh, if we think it globally, we don't have enough raw materials to produce the the solar panels and the wind uh, turbines that are needed for this transition. So Changing uh, the material culture in these terms alone is not going to um, help us to reach the decarbonization. <laughs> but we need to, to move towards the uh, And the interesting thing is that moving towards the renewables uh, will also trigger changes in our practice. This is a, a clue showing the, the production, which is the red line and the yellow line here, with the demand, which are the purple, blue, and green lines of, a, an, an, a, of an, energy, um, an energy community in Barcelona uh, during the whole week. The whole so from you know, night to you know, the whole week. Everything, every hour. If we put these two curves together, we see that we can try to match as far as possible the demand with the production so we don't have to use uh, batteries or to sell uh, electricity to the rest. But there's also there's always the problem of these big reactors, which is mainly caused by our use of uh, dwellings of electricity. Mm -hmm. And after all, so what we need is to analyze um, what was the balance of energy production. So this was the energy consumed, you no, know, in the first scenario. These two first columns. This is the energy consumption for the different types of buildings, and then we have energy production, and then this gray part is the energy that we need to buy in order to fulfill. Uh, or in order to you not know, to fulfill the demand at this in this peak in the afternoon. So changes, so if you are aware of this, what is capable to give this kind of technology, we can think about changing, so maintaining the same consumption, changing some of the activities in time. So just uh, saying, okay, I will not put this is mainly caused by cooking, watching TV, and washing, washing, dish washing. If we try to change part of those activities to another time in the day, so earlier, maybe we can cook in the morning and then just uh, have the, the meal prepared uh, early and when we want to have dinner, or we can uh, use a computer instead of a TV. So the computer is charged before and we don't get electricity while we are looking at the TV serial. So just making those arrangements, we can reduce uh, the amount of energy so we can make a better match of production and demand and reduce the amount of energy that we need to solve and when we need to, give, to depend for the exterior provider to, to get it. And also we uh, try to analyze what happens if we try to change uh, those activities, uh, our practices, in order to meet the production, uh, the production cost? These are very serious changes in that case, but uh, it shows that it's possible. No, that it's not just that we need to change the material culture in terms of what are the material the way in which we produce energy, but we need to match this change also with a change in our practices. And for that, we need to provide, as designers, we need to provide to the users with information. 
no, information uh, is crucial and it, um, it has been demonstrated that can just by knowing when it's better for us to consume energy when the energy is being produced. Uh, and this can uh, make a save in seven, between 7% 7 and 18% of the energy consumption. So being aware is an important part uh, for, for us to change or to adapt our, our practices to the new material also. And not just information, we can also as designers provide tools for the change, for personal changes uh, that can be uh, produced uh, by the users themselves. You no, know, with this idea of um, or the success, uh, with this idea of the IKEA system in which we can buy a furniture, but we can, you know, we as users, we have some resources that we can um, devote to the construction or the the the, the, mount, the mounting of the of the furniture. We can also think about refurbishment or the construction of a new habitability or uh, improvement of energy efficiency of buildings by using also the resources. If we think as architects and um, the professionals that manage resources in order to get habitability, which is the utility of architecture. We can not just think about natural resources, wind, sun, uh, light, etc., but also about the resources that can be provided by, by us as users of this uh, space. And this means to think about users as active uh, actors of the architecture. This was an experiment made by the, some ex students uh, in the university for the solar data competition in 2017, in which they uh, the, they constructed the activity, the daily activities that they did, so the practices, and tried to find which was the core uh, utility of those, those practices, and to think how those practices or what how those utilities could be fulfilled in a different way with change of practices, and the most important thing, what was the material culture that we need to provide? What was, what is, what does this material culture look like for a new decarbonized society, for a new energy culture um, that brings us to decarbonization? For instance, they, of course, they made use of these uh, mobile elements that protect from sun, uh, get less like, like green, that could uh, isolate some part of the house, etc. And 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 the first was made uh, in a radical way uh, about the use or the need of a fridge. So they decided to um to don't have a fridge, but it's the utility of the food. But of course, if you think that uh, and they did an, an interesting research on how uh, the combination uh, of different uh, daily products uh, put together or put separately uh, can be, you know, depending on how they absorb the different daily products, if you put them inside uh, in a candle, if you put them one between the, you know, one in front of the other, etc. So depending on how you store or you organize the storage of these basic purpose of this uh, food, they will uh, have a longer shelf, shelf, shelf life than uh, if you do it differently. So you really don't need a free to um, conserve those uh, those those, food and those basic products. Of course, you it's not just uh, not the, the fact that you change this material culture, this part, you know, a part of the material culture will mean that that will produce changes in the practices because the diet must be changed and adapted to the situation. Probably you don't, you cannot eat meat as often, or if you need eat, you will need to use resources that are out of the house in order to 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 have not to conserve. And this, uh, just to finish, is. Uh, has to do with an, the idea of to um, 
part of another uh, again to re regain this relation with the territory, no? to be aware of what is the territory capable to provide, and then uh, adapt on this line depending on this capacity. This is a, it's true that this is a, a large example. This is a, a, an ancient farm that is placed at the edge of Barcelona. This is the city of Barcelona, and the farm is, is placed in this valley, which is in the edge between the cultural park and the city of Barcelona, so the view uh, environment. And this farm is uh, occupied by uh, about 20 people that live together and they recover the water line, they recover the, the cropping lands in here, and they um, try to be um, close cycles in this territory and then use the resources that are available in this territory in order to fulfill the needs. So they are, in this sense, independent or dependent on the on the territory in which they live, but independent on external uh, provision of resources. And they are wondering about this other building here, which, which used to be a hospital, and it's now uh, with no use. So they want to give use, no, give a new use to this building. So the question was, how many people can live in there? And the answer, of course, is how do we measure it? So what are the units that we need to measure this kind of thing? And it, no, and well, it depends. It depends on what is the what are the norms and the practices of the people that are going to live. So we compare different uh, scenarios and the scenario that is uh, um, that, that in which we suppose an average energy or resource consumption uh, of, a, of a Barcelonian. And then two other uh, scenarios and the scenario in which we um, take into account the practices that are done in a, in a communal uh, building in Barcelona and the practices that are uh, that are done in by the people living in the in Camas de Ocarina. So depending on those practices, there were different limiting factors. No? In the case of the uh, inhabitants in Camas de the limiting factor was cost. So uh, because they used a lot of surface uh, per people, so uh, surface was the limiting factor. But if we don't count surface, we we see that water was a limiting factor and that up to 83 people could live there. While in the other two cases, about 40 people is the maximum amount of people that could live by using the resources of the territory of the valley. And the limiting heat, uh, factor here was heating, heating and, and the heating of hot water, not the production of hot water. So this yeah, it's interesting because thinking in this idea of energy culture, so this energy culture framework helps us to think about what are the trios that we can use to 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 close cycles or decarbonize, which is actually the, the main goal uh, when we talk about this idea of changing our energy culture and and, uh, and the idea of uh, sustainability. And also give us this idea that we need to think holistically and, and know that any change that we do in any of those factors will have consequences in the end. So thank you so much.